Hi students, I am Dr. Paridhi Garg and today we will be discussing about cavity preparations of cast metal restorations. So basically, it's a, it is an indirect restoration that is fabricated extra orally. That is, you, there is a lab procedure which is required. And then cemented onto the tooth structure, right? So there are intracoronal restorations which are placed inside the tooth. Like inlay, onlay and extra coronal restorations like crown. So inlay is a, uh, is a uh, restoration which covers the occlusal surface and usually one or two cusps. Now onlay is something which covers all cusps. It's an extra, uh, it's an intraoral restoration. That means it's within the tooth because it uh, covers the occlusal surface. It goes inside. So it is intracoronal and it, it is again cemented and lab processed. So what are the indications? When you have to replace a large extensively involved tooth, that means the carious is extensive. Uh, it's extensively carious and you need to involve a big uh, amount of uh, tooth structure, right? You have to rehab rehabilitate that. That is what I mean. Correction of occlusion and proximal contours. Now in this, this is the best uh, restoration for uh, proximal, controlling proximal contours and contact areas. Endodontically treated teeth. Support for partial and complete dentures. Now you can have your abutment teeth for partial dentures for fixed partial dentures with inlays or onlays, retainers for fixed prosthesis. And the uh, last uh, indication is if cusp capping is indicated. Now if cusp capping is indicated, you, uh, you will either go for an inlay and if cusp capping is indicated on all, all cusps, then you will go for an onlay. So basically there is a principle which is followed for cusp capping. If only half of the intercuspal distance if only half of the intercuspal distance is involved, then in that case, cusp capping is not required. If it's between half to two third, then in that case, cusp capping can be considered, but it is up to the clinician's discretion. Now, if it's beyond two third, then cusp capping is indicated. Okay, now the question, this question came in PGI. Minimally acceptable restoration for an endodontically treated maximal, uh, maxillary first premolar. Now, this is minimally acceptable, which means which is not acceptable. So, first is onlay, second is a MOD amalgam, third is a full cast crown, and fourth is an occlusal amalgam. So, onlay is not indicated for maxillary first premolar, it's the minimally acceptable restoration. Now, what are the contraindications? Developing or deciduous teeth because they have very high pulp horns. So, usually the pulp horns get involved when you prepare a cavity for uh, inlay preparation or uh, onlay preparation. High plug or caries index because you would want the patient to be able to maintain uh, oral hygiene. And the patients who are not able to maintain this restoration is not indicated. Parafunctional or occlusal interferences. Parafunctional and occlusion because, because it is a cemented restoration. So there are more, more uh, interfaces. So it can be weak when, uh, when uh, such high occlusal uh, forces are put on it. Dissimilar metals will cause galvanic reaction. So if there is an adjacent amalgam restoration and this cast restoration is also cemented in the mouth, then there will be an electrolytic cell which is created and it will cause very sharp pain. So, the, so immediately after inlay or onlay, if the patient complains of very sharp pain, then it's mostly due to galvanic uh, reactions. Small restorations. Because the cavity preparation is extensive for uh, inlay, so small rest for small restorations usually uh, inlay and onlays are not indicated. Aesthetics, because it is a metallic restoration, 
ऑल दो सिरेमिक इनलेज एंड ऑनलेज और ऑल्सो हैव ऑल्सो कम अप बट बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कास्ट मेटल इनलेज कास्ट मेटल रेस्टोरेशन सो वी आर पर्टिकुलरली टॉकिंग अबाउट मेटालिक इनलेज एंड ऑनलेज सो विच इज नॉट एस्थेटिक सो इट इज अगेन बिकम्स अ कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन इन एस्थेटिक एरियाज नाउ दिस दिस क्वेश्चन केम इन ए आई पी जी टू थाउजेंड इलेवन A patient reports after one hour of restoration of a mandibular molar with gold inlay with complaint of shooting pain when the teeth came in contact. Now, here come in contact is very important because that means there is some something which happens to the tooth when it comes in contact with the antagonist teeth, the opposite teeth, right? So basically, supra occlusion. It could be an answer, but within one hour, uh. the patient will not feel such shooting pain excess acid in mix no galvanic current between opposing amalgam restorations this is this is the this is the answer here retained cement in sulcus will not cause shooting pain so now you already know the answer so now coming on to the advantages of cast metal restorations higher strength This restoration has a very high compressive tensile shear and yield strength. So this we are talking mostly in comparison to amalgam and composite. Ability to reproduce precise form and minute details. So like we said it gives the best control over contacts and contours this restoration. So it is very precise restoration and also because it is fabricated extra uh, extra orally so lab control give it gives it better polishability and better control of contacts and contours control of uh, contacts and contours we've already discussed biocompatibility of the materials since it is a metal so it is um, and also uh, it is cobalt chrome so earlier nickel chrome was being used which was it which was uh, what was happening was the patients who had nickel allergy were getting uh getting allergic reactions so after cro cobalt chrome has been introduced it is it is one of the biocompatible materials not affected by tarnish corrosion so it is not affected by tarnish corrosion uh because uh, unlike amalgam cast restorations can be polished because it is fabricated extra orally that's why it has a better polishability now what are the disadvantages number of appointments and chair side time because there is a lab procedure involved so the number of appointments increase and chair side time will increase because you'll have to fabricate an inlay pattern extensive tooth preparation now this will require extensive tooth preparation so sometimes we uh, compromise the healthy tooth structure as well temporization required between the appointments you will have to temporize the uh, temporize the restoration then temporize the tooth cemented restoration so discrepancy and micro leakage so since it's a cemented uh, restoration there are there are more interfaces so basically there is one there is one restoration cement interface there is one cement tooth interface so there are there are two interfaces which are created so there are more chances of micro leakage and further uh, secondary caries or sensitivity and all the all the other problems all the other problems come handy with more interfaces created galvanic currents if there are dissimilar metals in the mouth like if there is an amalgam restoration so it can form an electrolytic cell and cause galvanic uh, currents increased cost now increased cost is because of the lab procedure because now lab procedure is also involved so the cost increases technique sensitive now since you want a very good control of uh, control of contacts and contours so your pr preparation has to be impe impeccable because you will have to give good bevels and flares now requirement of a dental casting alloy biocompatibility is very important because you are placing it in the mouth of the patient so biocompatibility is important coefficient of thermal expansion you don't want uh, the restoration to change uh, or compress or uh, expand a lot because of the thermal changes in the mouth so coefficient of thermal expansion is important melting range so it should have a high melting range that it because of extreme temperatures it shouldn't melt in the mouth tarnish and corrosion resistance this is very important which will give give the tooth longevity 
give the restoration longevity modulus of elasticity it should be rigid it should have a good strength finishing and polishing we should be able to do good finishing and polishing to the restoration so that uh, it is less plug retentive and it is it uh, so if it becomes plug retentive it will cause it can cause secondary caries it can cause further leakage so a good finishing polishing it will uh, make increase the longevity of the restoration aesthetics and cost factor now aesthetics if you can use a white metal it be, it is more aesthetic than the silver metal and cost factor now materials for cast restoration according to stud events there are they've classified it into traditional high gold alloys low gold alloys platinum silver alloys and base metal alloys so traditional high gold alloys has a high gold content low gold alloys have other uh, other metals like silver palladium platinum then it's platinum silver alloys now gold has completely been replaced by silver in this gold replaced by silver base metal alloys have no gold or no silver mostly cobalt chrome now classification of now this is this is a further uh, division like high high noble usually have more than 40% of gold noble which is which we we talked about low gold alloys low gold alloys these have about 25% more than 25% of noble metals predominantly base metals have less than 25% of noble metals now classification of gold alloys now this we are only talking about this further classification so class type 1 is soft because it has a very high gold content because gold is a soft uh, metal gold is a soft metal so high if something has high gold it will be more soft type 2 is medium type 3 is hard type 4 is extra hard so type 1 is used for one or two surface inlays type 2 is used for on lays and mod inlays so you see how with the strength how we are increasing the uh, surface of the restoration now class 3 is crowns and fpds because further the strength has increased so we can give uh, give a restoration which requires more strength extra hard now here bridges and partial dentures have come so you i am sure you understood the how it grades up how it uh, how the succession goes so there is this question which was asked in aims type 3 gold alloys does not have following features except so harder than type 4 used for small inlays easily burnishable than type 4 less gold than type 4 so the question asks type 3 gold alloys does not have following features except so they are asking what it has that what is what is the property it has so it is harder than type 4 no type 4 is the harder hardest use for small inlays no easily burnishable than type 4 this is right this is right because it is type 4 is the hardest so it is a uh, class 3 type 3 will be more burnishable as compared to type 4 and less gold than type 4 no it has more gold because that's why type 4 is hardest because it has less gold